It's the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion. This is for Saturday, the 13th of April. I'm Michael Graff. Dry conditions, but a cooling trend for the weekend and for the first part of next week. Temperatures going back below seasonal averages. That's good news. We'll also see some breezy conditions along with that. And now, if you'll excuse me for just one moment, let me uh, get ducked down here under the desk because I think things are about to get thrown at me. Okay, get ready for the hottest temperatures we've had so far this year. Later in the upcoming week, we could see our first uh, 100 degree day of the year uh, by Thursday or Friday. All right, we'll get into all of that and everything else in just a moment. But before we do that, we were not here yesterday, and that's when we normally do Photo Friday, but we weren't here. So we'll do Photo Friday on a Saturday. This is where we take a look at some of the photos and or videos that you guys have submitted First up, David Parnell. Cactus Shadows High School was the place. Last Saturday was the time. Beautiful weekend for high school sports. Baseball, softball ongoing. Uh, Things are warmer this weekend. It's going to really heat up by the time we get to next weekend, unfortunately. Then Beth in North Phoenix. March showers bring April flowers. Look at that. The garden in bloom. All the rain we've had early in the spring has led to the desert opening up. And so a great shot there from Beth. And last, but certainly not least, this is a a, a story that if you've been watching our videos for a while, you know about. Uh, Last fall, we rescued a cat, a, a little kitten near death. Michelle found this cat outside and uh, this, this cat was not looking too good. And we talked about this on the videos And um, we were able to, uh, well, I'm just going to, I won't take any of the credit. Michelle nursed this cat back to health, brought it to the vet, got its shots, gave it its medicine every day for weeks. And this is what it was uh, shortly after we found her. We named her Freya. And, you know, initially we weren't sure if we were going to keep her. But, of course, you can't bring a cat in. And after a few days, you you fall in love with the cat and you, you're not going to give her away. You're not going to find her another home. You're, you've found her her home. And so that was what she was like last fall. This is what she looks like now. She's obviously growing into quite the big kitty. And um, she is very, very sweet and just a, a wonderful cat. Um, a crazy cat, a mischievous cat, a cat with a very unique personality. But nevertheless, she is our cat and uh, she is doing wonderful. And there she is. That is Freya. All right. That's it for Photo Friday. Kind of the uh, Diet Coke of Photo Friday. It's very light on content. But you know, the content we did have was incredible. And so thanks to Michelle for uh, the retrospective there of Freya then and now. All right. If you have photos you want to submit for Photo Friday, and you know, they don't always have to be re- weather related. Uh, you can submit them to us here. Groff show at gmail.com is the email address. That is G R O F F show at gmail.com for photo Friday. All right, let's get into it here. The almanac from yesterday, the warmest day so far this year was yesterday at 95 degrees for the afternoon high. The air conditioner is really cranking up. 65 was the morning low 85 and 60 of the averages for this time of year. 99, the record high. And we're still way ahead on rainfall. That's good. Looking outside right now here at uh, just after 6 a.m. We've got clear sky out there. We're starting out at 66 degrees at Sky Harbor, dew point 28, humidity 24%. It's a light wind. The barometer 29.97 inches and steady. Temperatures across the country right now, kind of an interesting mix here. Uh, You've got uh, near freezing for Minneapolis, St. Paul, 45 in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Meanwhile, down to the south around uh, Huntsville, Alabama, it's in the uh, upper 30s. You've got 40s in parts of the deep south. So it's actually warmer in sections of the plains in the upper Midwest than it is in portions of the southeast U.S. And that's thanks to a cold front that came through. Uh, temperatures are recovering uh, in the southern plains, though, back in the 50s and 60s across Texas. And, of course, out here in the southwest, temperatures a little bit above average to begin the day. The upper level weather pattern across the nation shows high pressure is building in across the plains. It's extending out here toward the southwest, but a, an area of low pressure is developing there. You can see it just west of San Francisco. That will be our next weather maker, if you want to call it that. 
because for us, it's not really going to produce much except for cooler conditions and breezy uh, afternoons here. And so that will result in cooler temperatures as that comes on through. The watch warning map, obviously, with that area of low pressure coming into the west, we've got wind advisories to the north and west of Arizona across the Mojave Desert, the Las Vegas Valley for th this afternoon and this evening, and points further to the north from there. So if you're headed up uh, through uh, the Great Basin, parts of Nevada, uh, be aware of that. Windy conditions, red flag warnings over parts of New Mexico, Texas, so scattered across the Plains states. Convective outlook for today, we've got the marginal risk of severe storms and of all places around Bend, Oregon, Klamath Falls, Redmond, Oregon for today. And here's the precipitation outlook valid through next Saturday morning. Rain amounts in Phoenix, nothing statewide, basically nothing as we are in the dry season. It sure looks like it's going to live up to that expectation. Not much in the way of precipitation to be found here across Arizona for the next seven days and probably beyond that. And we'll show you why that is right now. As we take a look at the models, see what the future may hold. Here we go. This is the GFS. It's the 06 Z run. This is valid at two o'clock this afternoon. All right, ridging off to the east of us, there's that area of low pressure along the California coast, a southwesterly flow in here for today. And what it means down at the surface, sunny, a little bit breezy in the afternoon. High temperatures today should top out Somewhere close to 90, so a little bit cooler than what we saw yesterday. We've got rain for California, maybe some high elevation snow, but that's not going to come anywhere close to us. For tonight, clear sky, overnight lows mainly in the 50s to low 60s, and then tomorrow. Sunny, breezy, not quite as warm, high temperatures, low to mid 80s. Monday, that area of low pressure will pass by. As it does, it's weakening, but it's moving to the north of us. This far south, there's just not enough dynamic support or moisture to warrant any precipitation. In fact, there will hardly even be any clouds in the sky. Uh, just uh, some winds, uh, southwest winds could be gusting up to around 25 miles an hour here in Phoenix, uh, especially Monday afternoon as that system moves on through. Uh, any precipitation will be mostly north of Arizona across Utah, Colorado, points north. Uh, high temperatures on Monday. This should be the coolest day of the forecast period, maybe the coolest day we have for quite some time, with highs mostly in the middle, perhaps upper 70s. I'd say uh, afternoon highs somewhere between 73 to 77. All right, but once that system is out of here, you know how, how it works around here. This is the month of April, and we warm up quickly, and I mean really quickly. High temperatures will rebound back toward the mid and upper 80s on Tuesday with high pressure building in. Wednesday... We should be up into the mid-90s, potentially. And then Thursday. Okay, I'm, I'm going to duck back under the desk here. Yeah, this, this is going to be the day, potentially. High pressure in control. High temperatures anywhere from about 95 to 100 here in Phoenix. Um, it is not a for sure that we'll hit 100 here, but it'll still be pretty toasty. And same thing Friday. Highs uh, 96 to 100. The sky's sunny. The air dry and that's going to be about it um, because luckily another trough should develop just to the north of Arizona as we go to a week from today Saturday the 20th and a, a weak wave comes through and that should at least lower temperatures several degrees back toward the low 90s or so uh, but nevertheless no precipitation with that and going out 10 days this is Monday the 22nd high pressure is building back in across the west and that sure looks like it's going to be warm and dry, high temperatures well up in the 90s, and maybe the warmest desert spots approach the triple digits. The GFS does try to hint at a little bit of moisture sneaking into eastern Arizona thanks to uh, some type of upper low that develops to the south and west of us, and that could lead to an isolated shower or storm for the rim country. But we're not going to hang our hats on that, especially not 10 days out. But it is something that we'll keep an eye on. Okay, uh, precipitation around here. Rainfall for Phoenix. This goes out through the 27th of April. It's off the GFS Ensemble, and you can just forget about it. Uh, the Ensemble mean is around 1 100th of an inch, uh, so no meaningful chance of precipitation. Same deal off the European Ensemble. Almost none of the members indicate measurable rain, just a, just a handful of them. Temperatures off the national blend of models. Okay, we'll start with the good news. Cooler. As we go toward, uh, especially tomorrow and Monday, high temperatures uh, probably stay in the 70s there. 
and then we warm up next week. Now, the NBM has 98 on Thursday. Um, guidance is definitely trending warmer with each run, unfortunately, and, and we could very well get real close to, if not touching those triple digits Thursday or Friday. But it's more symbolic. I mean, what's the difference? If it's 99 or 100, does that really matter? I mean, it's it's hot. It's April. We're, we, we're not ready for it. We don't want it, but it's coming. And it's an inevitability of living in Phoenix. Whether it happens in April, whether it happens in May, it's going to happen. And once it does, it doesn't usually cool off too much thereafter. All right. Well, that's it for the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion for today. I know people are like, Mike, why don't you just go back to being sick for the next five months? Uh, You know, save the bad news. I know. All right. That's it for today. If you enjoy these videos, even if you don't like the news that I'm telling you, I, I, I just report on what's out there. Okay, we just do model discussions and talk about the weather. I cannot influence it nor control it. I have no say over what happens. If I did, The weather would be a lot more pleasant here. Unfortunately, there'd probably also be 29 million people that live in Phoenix. Um, You know, I'd be a big fan of about 68 degrees for the high every day and about 42 for the low. That'd be how I'd roll. All right. Uh, Anyway, if you enjoy these videos, then be sure to subscribe, like, share, click that notification bell, leave those comments, questions, and suggestions. And if you really like what we do here, you want to support us monetarily, click that thanks icon below the video on YouTube. Or, of course, you can make a direct contribution via my PayPal, uh, groffshow at gmail.com, G-R-O-F-F show at gmail.com via PayPal, uh, really helping us out through some tough times around here. All right. The executive producer of the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion is my one and only, the sweetest of all time, the Asian sensation, and cat whisperer i'm talking about my michelle so do check her out and her relevant videos and everything else linked up down in the description and of course our streaming station called kmgx whereupon we play a ton of music and have a lot of fun with that so i encourage you to check that out as well all right um that's it Uh, thank you guys so much for watching all of your continued support be safe stay cool stay hydrated out there and have yourselves a beautiful Saturday.